Welcome back to Motor Learning on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of the ways or parameters that we can change with respect to practicing a motor skill, and that is the intensity of the practice. Now there are two ways we can classify the intensity. We can do so according to the cardiovascular intensity or the perfection intensity. We're going to talk about both of these. Um, a little bit more detail on perfection uh, in a little bit. So, cardiovascular perspective. Really with this, we want to quantify that intensity as maybe some percentage of a cardiovascular parameter. Well, there's a few cardiovascular parameters. One, we could do VO2, but that's usually more appropriate for athletics. So what we want to do is maybe use maximum heart rate, because this is also something that we don't have to determine experimentally. Maximum heart rate can be calculated. Okay. So it's 220 minus the age. That's the simplest formula. And so we can easily determine a person's maximum heart rate and a percentage of that. So from a cardiovascular perspective, low intensity or light intensity might be between 40 and 54 percent of maximum heart rate. Moderate cardiovascular intensity might be between 55 and 69 percent of maximum heart rate. And then vigorous high intensity uh, motor practice, whatever it is, greater than 70% of our maximum heart rate. We can also use what's called the perfection perspective, and this just has to do with, is the person making errors or not? In perfect practice, the person is really not making errors, and so this would be considered low intensity, whereas imperfect practice would mean the person is making errors, and so that would be considered high intensity. Now one thing I want to emphasize before we go any further with respect to errors is that errors are absolutely necessary for learning. Okay? Uh, when you make errors, that actually stimulates neurogenesis. It plays into that neuroplasticity aspect. Okay? So in order to learn, you have to make errors. In fact, it turns out that just doing a simple motor task over and over and over and over again does you no good assuming no errors are made. You have to make errors. And so in this perspective, imperfect practice is the only one you're making errors in. So that would be high intensity. And by the intensity, we just mean that apparently if we're doing perfect practice, it's a low enough intensity to where it's fairly easy uh, for the person practicing to complete the task without errors. So the solution there, if we wanted to increase the intensity, is just make the task harder. Do something to the task, change some parameter, make it more difficult to where that person starts making errors, and now we have imperfect practice. So let me flip over to the next slide here, really just put this thing up here, and talk a little bit about imperfect practice. Now when we're talking about uh, imperfect practice, we're usually referring to uh, motor learning, which when we're talking about motor learning, we're talking about neurogenesis. Okay? And so the key is with imperfect practice, practice that it's at a high enough intensity where we're making errors, um, that's going to facilitate neurogenesis like I mentioned. Remember, you have to make errors in order to learn. Okay? If you don't make any errors and you're just simply repeating the task over and over again, you don't get near the amount of neurogenesis. You have to put you have to put a stress, not a bad stress, but a stress on your nervous system in order to expect to get the synthesis of new neurons, new synapses, and strengthen synapses. Okay? And so to do that, you have to have error. Now there's another aspect where we can talk about imperfect practice, and that's with respect to skeletal muscle. This is more of the exercise physiology approach, and we normally don't talk about this when we're doing motor learning, but I also wanted to uh, uh, provide some additional context and some additional information just to tie some things together. Now let's suppose this guy right here who's doing barbell curls, he's doing let's say 10 repetitions per set. If it were perfect practice, he'd be able to get all 10 repetitions with good form. Okay? But if he's doing imperfect practice, that would imply that maybe he only gets to repetition 7 or 8 and then he fails. In fact, they often say, go till failure. That would be imperfect practice. But if we want him to fail at it, not in a bad way, we need to vary some parameter of the exercise, like increase the weight. Increase the weight to the point that he fails, maybe only gets to repetition 7 or 8. Now, is that necessarily bad when he fails? 
No, in fact, it's good. Just like uh, your nervous system in the context of motor learning needs error to effectively have neurogenesis and synaptogenesis, skeletal muscle needs failure to have things like hypertrophy. Okay? We'll go to this slide again. Uh, this is actually a, a table. You can find these on Google Images uh, pretty easily. But notice that um, when we're looking at different things like strength or power or hypertrophy, they're going to require a certain number of repetitions, and then you ought to be failing after that. So hypertrophy is normally around eight to nine repetitions, and you'll see some variable uh, numbers depending on what you're looking at. Whereas strength gains, uh, strength in the absence of hypertrophy, strength would need around four repetitions, three or four, let's say. Okay? And so if this guy is wanting hypertrophy, let's say, he shouldn't be getting up to 10, 11, 12 repetitions. No, he needs to be failing at about eight or nine because only with that imperfect practice, only with that failure, is he telling the skeletal muscle, hey, I need to hypertrophy to compensate in order to lift more weight, right? And so that failure is important in the skeletal muscle point of view, but it's also important in the motor learning point of view because if your neurons, if your central nervous system is not being stressed, it won't grow. Your central nervous system is very similar to muscle. Muscles only grow if you stress them, if you go till failure. You need error to stimulate the growth of new neurons and new synapses. And so that's the big point I wanted to get across with imperfect practice. Okay? But one other aspect I want to talk about is, do you always want to push someone to a high intensity, whether it be from perfection or a cardiovascular perspective? And the answer is no. For example, if we have a person who um, has low cardiovascular endurance, maybe it's an elderly person who's at risk for falling, we don't want to necessarily push them to a high intensity because they're at risk for a fall. They don't have the cardiovascular stamina uh, to maintain this intensity or even get there at all in the first place. So depending on the situation, you may not want to actually take someone up to high intensity. Maybe low or moderate is sufficient. Okay? But another big bullet point of the intensity thing here is that in order to have neurogenesis, in order to learn, you have to have air. That's the big key. So hopefully this gave you a good understanding of practice intensity from both cardiovascular and perfection perspectives. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.